So when I get set, I fell asleep. I, I didn't say it last night. But y'all be encouraged, and I pray whatever God has to say this morning through his word, um, that you are encouraged, and it's just what you need. So she's going to start with the song. I'm going to pray since I can. Thank you for your tender love and kindness towards us, God. Thank you for another day, God. Thank you for being amongst the land of the living. And God, we thank you. So many have gone on before us, and they, and they had plans. God, but we trust you because our plans are in your hands. Whatever your will is, whatever your way for us, God, give us direction and clarity, God. Open up our ears to hear only you, our hearts, to, to be obedient to your word at all times. Our minds to think like you. And God, we'll be careful to give you the glory because you're good. You're not good because of us. You're good just because you are who you are. And so we thank you, Lord, for being unchanging, for being all powerful and all knowing God. You are amazing. And we don't just say that to give you another adjective. That's to who you are, God. And we thank you for those things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, I love y'all. I'm here. I'm going to turn my screen off. And, uh, well, maybe I'm not. So, Felicity, go ahead with worship. All right. I'm only going to sing one song because uh, I don't have any music or anything. But um, I want to be led by the Holy Spirit at all times. And I know we were already, the Lord has already started. He's already hovering. And so, like Minister Austin said, I pray that you guys had a good morning and a good week. And even if you have not, everything this week that has happened to it in all of our lives is a setup for a lesson or for God to do something through us. And so, I just pray that today that everything that I say, that it is pleasing to God and that it's something that ignites your spirit. And y'all know me, I'm, I'm going to interact so... Um, even as we get to the end of the teaching, then I ask you guys a couple questions. So if you have questions for us, me and us, you know, the leaders, or just something to say, please feel free to do that because we're super interactive. But the song that's on my spirit this morning is, um, I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, our cloudy days are gone. We can sing to you this song. We just want to say that we love you more than anything. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, we love you. More than anything, oh, we love you, Jesus, hallelujah. We worship and adore you, just want to tell you, Lord, we love you more than anything. Time. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship and adore you. We want to tell you that we love you more than anything. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we bless you on today. You the you are the pot of God, and we are the clay, and we just thank you, God, that you give us the ability to come before you today. Minister Austin has already prayed. But as we set the tone for the word of God to come forth today, we ask that you would ignite us, God, that you and we actually confess in advance that you have our full and undivided attention. Everything else, Lord, from work to distractions to people and places and things all week long has had our attention. And so we just give our attention to you today, God, because we wish we could give you more. But, Lord, we thank you for this very present moment that you even give us a chance to fellowship and as we begin to the word of God today, we even ask that you would, those who are listening in, Minister Austin, that are doing other ministerial duties, God, being a mother and doing all the things that you require her to do in this season of, of her life, we ask that you would cover her as you give her the opportunity today to pour into other people and all others who are listening. Lord, give us a way, God, that as we empty ourselves once again this week, that you will refuel us. Bless the children, God, those who are out out of school, those who are in track meets and all of those things, give them your strength, Lord, so that you even give them a way to minister to, with their gifts and talents in their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask y'all to unmute yourself. I know, Kia, you got your babies and stuff, so when you get a second, you can as well. But today, I honestly, um, I prayed last night. And even in the middle of all of the things that I've encountered myself this week, um, I really want to hear God's voice. I never want to get on here and just do what Felicia want, what Felicia's flesh want to do. Because I believe that this time is so sacred for us because coming in fellowship and even just pushing the button to listen to the word is an act of worship to God. And it shows God that we want more of him. We want, we thirst and we hunger for him. So don't ever think that what you're doing, Kia, what you're doing, even Minister Austin went in, in the middle of being busy. He's still first. And we have to always set a time, set aside a time for who God is. Because if we don't do that, we die. We die spiritually. We become empty in the wrong way. <laughs> I know last week, um, and I'm going to elaborate a little, a, a little bit about those that may not was able to join us last week, and that way it's going to tie into the message today, Kia. And last week, we talked about um, emptying ourselves before God. And Sister Londa, you do you remember just a couple things so we could kind of catch Sister Kia and those other people up that may log on or be on Marco Polo? Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you remember? Um, okay. Okay, Kia. Um, Sorry, I have bills, but um, so that's off okay. the top of my head, um, we definitely <laughs> talked about um, when we become, you did an um, uh, awesome uh, game, being thankful, uh, writing down the things that you can't live without, and um, that turning that list into uh, something to be grateful over, which I absolutely love. Um, and then the thing that stuck out the most to me was um, really dwelling on the fruit of the spirit um, and all of the, the nine fruits and, and really working on that um, and just talking about like without, um, you know, going before the Lord and being refreshed um, and without the Holy Spirit, it would be hard to kind of operate um, mm -hmm. in, in the fruit of the spirit. Um, and so. That's kind of what I remember. I don't know. No, that was good. That was good. And then I'll help you a little bit too, right? Because we, we all interacting and we're doing this together. But I'm just to kind of piggyback because the, the kids are getting ready to get back on as well. She said she's logging on from another device. But for those that may replay this, um, the fruit of the spirit are biblical terms and it sums up the nine attributes that us as believers should live in accordance to. And what that means is as believers, when we become saved, when we say we and we confess that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, there are things that we have to take off in our old man, the bad attitudes, the things that are not pleasing to God, the things that grieve God. But how do we do that? Because the world, we hear all these people saying this stuff and sometimes it is like something that practical that we can't grasp. So I'm going to break down a little bit about the uh, fruit of the spirit for those that may 
um, see this again. And the fruit of the Spirit are those characteristics that the Holy Spirit wants us to abide in to help us to live a better life and to also show the attributes of God so that we can live abundantly. And so the, um, the fruit of the Spirit, the first one is love. The scripture says with love and kindness, we draw people and I won't prolong until these too long, but I don't want to just skip over what we learn in detail because everybody, the mindset ain't the same. Everybody don't, you know, people, some people are still learning like myself. I'm still learning. And even though God has put me in the seat of teaching today, I'm also learning even from Sister Londa kind of saying things last week. It helps me as well as someone that's placed in the forefront. So the 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 first fruit of the spirit is love. How we have the how we have to draw others in love. And if people don't see love, they don't see Jesus. He is love. And how you gonna be ugly to somebody and try to invite him to this wonderful Jesus that we serve? So showing people love is important. Love and joy, and peace, and patience, and kindness, goodness and faithfulness um gentleness and the spirit of self-control self-discipline and so we went into all of those things last week and i just know that and, and that came from galatians 5 and 22 and 23 so if you want to take notes and study on this um on your personal time this is a really 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 good passage to go back into and to dissect um, and if you don't know the answers, I love the fact that we have each other. This is why God tells us to fellowship so that if it's something that as believers, if we're new in Christ or if it's something we confuse about, we, sh we got each other. We should be able to come to one another and ask questions in to get help instead of, you know, hearing the word and becoming bored with it because we don't get it and we are too embarrassed to ask questions. But we have each other for that, right? And there's no, I hear, I hear sayings all the time say, no question is, uh, the only, only question that is a uh, dumb question is if, if you don't ask it. And so that's true. It's no question that is dumb, okay? Unless you just don't ask the question. Because then you, you remain ignorant. And the, the scripture says, and all that I get and get understanding. And I believe that in that passage, it means in every area of our life. If you don't know something, even the scripture gives us um, ways to learn everything. And so, anywho, um, the next thing um, we also talked about is we talked about what the word uh, full truly means. And to be full means to... Um, means to occupy and like we want God to saturate us and occupy the space in our heart because when God and we when we indwell the Holy Spirit it shows through our personality it shows how we treat others it shows kindness and love and the fruit of the Spirit like we were talking about and when God comes in and we allow him to fill us up right we uh, we become vessels for him Prime example, and I don't know why the Holy Spirit just led me to do this. This bottle right here. How can I expect to be hydrated or to become to to fulfill the natural natural things that I need in life, like hydration or even being able to get up and walk? If I'm not hydrated, my muscles and nothing works right. And in order for me to fill up this bottle, do you think it's gonna get filled up if I'm sitting right here in this chair and I don't move? No, you're going to stay thirsty out of white mouth. You know what I'm saying? It's funny and it's comical, but it is so true. So in order for me to be refueled, I have to take a course of action. Like get up the first time. I got to get up in the natural and then I got to use my legs, the tools that God has given me, right? The tools in, in, the, in the spiritual sense, that's our word. In order to be filled, we got to go to prayer. We got to come to church. We got to do all of these things to be filled and we have to make conscious decisions like podcasting, all of these tools and things that God has given us. We got to get up and go to that faucet. The faucet is him in our prayer closet communication with him to be refueled. And so I thought that was a good analogy. I don't know. I just used that. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But in order for me to be hydrated and to get what I need, I also have to put in a course of action. Put this up to my mouth. Live my hand. See, we got to be partners with God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for yes. that. 
We have to be willing to get up and do things. We cannot expect to be um, thirst uh, or to be uh, to feel better in ourselves if we don't take the necessary actions to do something and be partners with God. He's not just going to come sit on your lap and say, hey, get up, move your legs. And he's already given us the things that we need. Right. And he's given us these tools so that we can become full in him, full of the things that is pleasing to him, full of the things that lets us allows us to have vision and purpose and make money and take care of our children. And all of these things, even the small things that we kind of sometimes forget how to have provision, how to turn on, make sure our lights and stuff turned on. All of those things are done literally because when the Holy Spirit comes and lives in you, it is literally the instructions to life. Like we talk about, but the Bible is basic instructions before leaving the earth. If we don't have these basic instructions, then we die spiritually. I can elaborate on that all day long, but I hope that makes sense. Right, Sister Londa does it? Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, the next thing, so let's go into our, our subtitle for today. All right, so last week we talked about emptying ourselves. I think I gave a pretty good uh, wrap-up of that. Um, anything else to add before we move into today's teacher, Sister Londa? You want to say anything else? Oh, no. Uh, that was good. Okay. Um, let me see. Oh, no, I just want to, like, touch on what you were saying. Mm -hmm. um, fool me to capacity. It's so funny how God does stuff. Because it kind of just ties into like Bible study where it's like, is he inhabiting your whole heart? And when you were talking about full the capacity, you, it just reminded me like when you invite him in, can he have capacity of every room in your heart? So that was it. But that's I good, that. mother. Yes, because in Bible study, we have been talking about our house, Christ's home. And so and we talked about the different analogies in like the living room, what the living room uh, signifies in our spiritual life as well as our natural life. Like the dining room, the signifies nourishment. How do we get nourished in Christ? So if you've been missing out on Bible study, honey, that, that honestly, that's how the Holy Spirit works. And I didn't even think about that. Thank you, Sister Londa. That even the message from Sunday and what we've been also learning in our Bible study stuff, the Lord is like literally putting the pieces together. And as we assemble ourselves together, he is literally speaking to, and then that's what's so crazy is we've been fellowshipping with our sister church on Wednesdays and they're all the way in Atlanta and we all the way in Charlotte and that's how the Holy Spirit works. It doesn't matter where you are, he's in sync. And that's the beautiful part about who God is. Um, and even in our in my stores at work, it's so crazy. I can have conversations with some of the, my colleagues or whatever. And then a customer come in the store. And the Lord literally um, allows me to, the same thing we was talking about, he'll allow me to say to a customer, and the customer come in, and I'm ministering to them, and the customer literally is talking about the same thing. So how does the Holy Spirit work? They could have went to any other store, and they came to mind, because I got another store two, three minutes away. And to know that the Lord is so strategic in all that he does, <laughs> even in your lives. Think about that. Some of the things that you think is a coincidence, it's not really a coincidence. Like I was talking about my friend who passed last night. You know, even, and this is just me being transparent. That same friend was like that little hard-headed little brother Roscoe to me. <laughs> and it was so many times where I done popped Cam upside the head and tell him to leave them girls alone while he supposed to be working. And tell him to pull his pants up because nobody else would give him a chance. And little did I know that the Lord was setting up stuff for me to even be ministering in the middle of him dying on somebody's floor that I also helped. I had to help walk them through the prayer last night, four hours on the phone with his mom. And even those things are tr strategic. What in your life do you think is a coincidence? Where you work right now, it's not a, it's not a coincidence. The, act, the people of, that you've met in the past, it was not a coincidence. And so what I was talking about earlier is just making sure that wherever you work, play, or eat, even now, if you don't feel like it's value in it, just know that nothing God is allowing right now is an accident. And so I'm going to take, take the next step and talk about what today, how today coincides with um, what we learned on Saturday is on um, Sunday as well in Bible study. And this morning, the Lord was speaking to me about 
entering into the rest, resting in God and entering into his rest. So as we empty ourselves like last week into God and allow God to refill us up, now we're going to talk today about resting into, resting in, taking to our rest in God. And um, the Lord was really dealing with me about that because I believe that in this season of all of our lives, there's so much that's going on around us in life, with this COVID stuff, with our personal lives. Even some of us are in transition. Just asking God what the next steps is. Feeling overwhelmed, death around us, money funny, health issues, um, trying to help other people when you feeling tapped out. So it's just, I think, one of those areas that not only as myself dealing with, going through breakups, things of that sort. You know, it's so many things that I can name and rattle off, and I know I'm not the only one. And I believe that um, God gave me that word today because I think it's going to help not only um, you guys, but it's helping me too. So as I'm teaching, I'm also being poured into by the Holy Spirit. And so today, um, I want to dissect what the word rest means, okay? And I want you to grab you a pen and a piece of paper. And even later on this week, because I am um, recording this because I, I got some people at my job that it got to work and they want to hear the message. And then I'll send it to y'all on a pri private link. So even later on this week, you can go back to these things. Because how many times, even in the natural, have you watched a movie or a show? And then you go back and watch it and it's something you missed, Right. So I believe even the word works like that. So that's why the scripture tells us to meditate on the word day and night and go back to those things. And when you and your time, even when things are going well, to go back into that word, you may hear the word differently the second or third time. So it's always just good to revisit those things. So piece of paper. I looked up the word rest this morning and this thing really, really had my spiritual baby leap. But I was just like, oh, God, you finna like really show up today. And so um, the first thing that when I looked it up, it said to cease from working. Everything that we talk about today, we're going to have a natural sense and a spiritual sense. OK, so I like to make the word practical and fun because the sermon God ain't boring. And I feel like even when we're learning, it can be such fun if it's done the proper way, because don't nobody want to sit in no classroom. Like even when we was in school, right? You and used to hate to go to certain teachers class. Cause I'd be like, oh, Lord, I'm going to be falling asleep in here. And I do believe that when we're in service or we're in fellowship, that the word of God should be uh, magnetic and we should want more. And so I believe as a teacher today who God has placed here, I believe that what, what God is getting ready to say today is going to have us jumping out of our seats and being excited about what life is about to bring. Because we're going to learn in our daily lives that when our situations and it's a storm all around us and things is going crazy, you're feeling overwhelmed, you got no money, health going on. You, you're ready to cuss somebody out? Don't do that, saints. That you're going to learn how to enter the rest of God today because of this word. And so the word rest, number one, it means to cease from working. Or to cease from movement. I'm going to break these down, but I, wanna, I want y'all to hear me today. And then it means in order to, it means to cease from work or movement in order to relax. It means to refresh yourselves. It means to recover strength. That's a word by itself. It's not a resting in God. Let me tell you, I heard Joyce Myers break this down just a little bit. And I'm a paraphrase between her and T.D. Jakes. And it says, rest is not the absence of troubles. So don't, we're not delusional. We know when things ain't right, we don't feel good. But we always learn that we don't go by, we're not people that go by what we see. We go by what we believe. And I believe that when we're entering into the rest of God, that it's not the absence that we're going through stuff, right? But it does mean that we trust our outcome. 
and that we trust that God is already going before us. And we can't ever forget, thank you, Holy Spirit, that God is already gone before us. So even when we in one space, we serve a God that's already, he already has the plan laid out and the victory before us. My daddy always say that we fight from victory. So even when I'm in my chaotic moments and I'm standing still and I'm trusting God that he's already went into my problem. And while I'm trying to worry, that's why the scripture says be anxious for nothing. Because God has already made our things straight out. He's already that money you worry about. He already done made provisions down the road. And you sitting up there worrying because you won't enter the rest of God. Those whole situations that them jobs that we trying to leave. He already know the answers to what our future is. Oh, I just preached a whole sermon right there. And we have to understand that while we're where we are, the importance about resting in God is to do what you're supposed to do while you're resting in God. That means to be a good steward, to do everything in excellence, to not do it unto the job, but to do it unto the Lord. That's what that means. So while we're entering, and we're, while we're waiting on the manifestation of what we trust in God for, while we're resting, we're resting in peace. Who's the Prince of Peace? Who do we serve? <laughs> right. And that's why the spirit of God tells us that we have to enter into that rest, that peace in God to know that he's already went before us and made those things already all right. Like Minister Austin say in her song, it's already all right, but we got to stand firm into the word. And while we're raiding, I'm not delusional y'all. We going to feel. But while we're feeling, we got to refuel ourselves and we have to re uh, we have to rest in God. And we, the way that we do that, I'm finna get real practical today. Okay? It's faith. That's all the rest of God is. It's faith. And the scripture says, without faith, it's an impossible to please God. How you gonna expect God to come into your situation? Oh God, thank you, Holy Ghost. How you going to expect God to come into your situation when you sitting up there worrying? And he says, be anxious for nothing. And he just calm, cool, and collect and smooth because that's the God we serve. Because he already know, like, girl, chill, chill out. <laughs> I got you, right? But we have to enter into that rest by trusting God. And then how do we do that? How do you tell me to trust God when somebody laying on my floor dead? How do we trust God when things are chaotic? Because we enter into that, pl that place of prayer. And the scripture says that we don't serve a high priest that's not in touch with how we feel. Amen. God already know what you're going through. You are not alone in your circumstance. And I have to remind myself like that all the time. And he walked this earth. He went through the, the, the physical attributes in this body to know how we're going to feel. That's why he died for us. So we have to remember that it's nothing that we're going through in life that God ain't, he's not oblivious to that. And so we have to just learn how to trust the person that has already went before us and made it straight. Okay. And so when we're talking about, let's break this down. When we're talking about the rest of God to cease from work, how many know that sometimes we so bad, we such busy bodies. Sometimes we make work for ourselves. And when, when the scripture say cease from work, it's important to do that because how are you going to pour from an empty? How are you going to hear God, first of all, in the middle of being busy? You have to make a decision to cease from work. I'm going to give kudos to my boss. Like, one of the things that I'm learning in this life, and this is me pat, popping myself on the hand. Sometimes I get so overwhelmed with working and things like that, that I forget to take time for Fifi. And so I commend the people around me, like my coworkers. They are, everybody taking a vacation. Because we work hard. My little team over here in Rivergate. <laughs> Honey, let me tell you something. How you do almost $80,000 in one day, Memorial Weekend? My gosh. Because that's the strength of God, too. Don't get me started on that. But when God places us places, we have to understand that even in, let me, thank you, thank you, God. There are scriptures in the word of God, because everything that God asks us to do, he already did it in himself, in the word. How many times did God steal away and he ceased from work? 
to have balance and to steal away on the mountaintop and to steal away in places when everybody else, the disciples going crazy, woo, 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 God be disappearing on them, them jokers. And I love the scripture because it make me laugh, right? When you really go and dissect and you get a, a, a passage that you can kind of break down, I be seeing God in the physical. That's just the way my mind is and I thank God for it. But sometimes I be like, boy, Jesus dipped on them, boy. Look at that. <laughs> but it is true. And he did that so that he can be refueled and he can hear from the Father. Yeah. We know that we, we serve the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, right? There are three people in one. But God the Father, when God, when Jesus walked the earth as a human being, he went up into the mountains and stuff to hear from God. He even have a, had a prayer life. That's a message right there. You got to cease from work and steal away and get in your prayer closet. How you going to expect to be refilled if you don't steal away in the presence of God? In the spiritual realm, we got to do that. And now let's get practical. I don't know who this is for because I just did it though. And this is because the Holy Spirit literally was dealing with me about this. I took off for my birthday. You know why? Because I'm about the only one on my team that has not really took a vacation. The last time I left work is because my auntie died. And so in order for me to be the, the best leader that I can be, because I realize too that in some situations I have to step back because I'm being a little too emotional. I'm being a little too touchy. I'm being a little bit not, I'm not sharp as I need to be because I, it's my own fault because I haven't ceased from work in the natural and when I do that, it makes me a better friend. It makes me a better confidant. It makes you a better mother, sister Londa. It makes you a better employee. When you, I don't care if it's only five minutes. Sometimes, I remember times where I used to keep my nieces and nephews sometimes. And sometimes it gets really chaotic when you got five children running around here or three or two. And sometimes I remember that if I had to keep them for more than one day, sometimes I had to go in the bathroom. It's not nothing wrong with that. Sometimes as a parent, you might have to go get in your closet or go take a, a shower that's extra, extra five minutes and talk to the Lord in there. But those little times, little but big, are times where you got to let God refuel and pour back into you. And so that you can enter into the rest of God. Because just that little fuel... It'll give you the whole ammunition you need just to just to kind of make it through the rest of the day. Minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, I always be saying that. That's my motto for this year. Because sometimes you can't expect that God to just give you everything you need at one time. Sometimes it just takes that prayer for five seconds in the bathroom or that 10 seconds while you finna snap on somebody at work or go off on somebody to just refuel and step back. So that you can enter into God's rest and trust him to go before you and vindicate you in the situation. Now, the, the next one is our movement in order to relax. Um, Psalms talks about be still and know that he's God. Sometimes you got to stop and sit down somewhere. Have you ever heard this person or this friend or whoever in your life? Every time you call them, they busy. Every time. <laughs> It's just like, what you doing? I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. That drive me nuts. You hear me? And sometimes it almost make me not even want to, I don't even want to talk to you no more. Every time. Cause you, and that's why if you, every now and then you hear somebody ask me what I'm doing, I said be uh, being productive. Because even sometimes, because I try to, listen, life and death lie right here. And sometimes you can speak to yourself. This is Lily. Give me one second. Let me invite her. Okay. Sometimes you can speak. She's like, I need to get on Zoom. <clears throat> if I keep saying I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, <laughs> then I never become productive. Then I always feel overwhelmed. Because sometimes when you're saying that all the time, you don't give yourself space to have positive affirmations. You got to, the scripture says, speak those things that are not as though they already were. So sometimes you just have to watch your language. <sighs> Ask God for balance. And it talks about that even in the scripture. 
I, that thing convicted me when I saw that in the Word of God. I got to find that scripture. I have to send that to y'all. But I remember it was a time in my life where I was always doing something. How do you hear the voice of God when you always busy? That's why you always busy. You never get no direction. You never get no instruction. You never get nothing because you don't take time to cease from movement. And to get in a space where you can relax. Sometimes it's just okay when you adult, listen to me. Sometimes it's okay to do nothing. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm preaching to somebody. I know this sounds simple, but this helps us with everyday application in life to survive. Because sometimes life gets so overwhelming and beats you up. You hear me? Yeah. And so we have to un remember to enter into the rest of God. Sister Alicia joined us, so I'm going to kind of catch her up. We're talking about how we break down the word, uh, how do we rest in God in the middle of chaos, in the middle of life, in the middle of everything going haywire. We break it down, and we the first thing that we say is to cease from, from work. So we have to not only in the physical sense, sometimes it's okay to take a day off, but even in the spiritual sense, to cease from doing everything outside of this earthly realm and to just get in your face before the Lord for five minutes and get answers to whatever you need. And sometimes I just lay there. Sometimes I sit right there on my couch in my favorite prayer spot and I put the pillows down and I just lay out. And I don't even, sometimes I don't even know what to say because even the scripture says God bottles our tears. Sometimes I get in these moments where I, my words ain't even, I don't even know what to say to God. And he even honors, the scripture says he bottles our tears. You hear me? We don't serve a God, I'm going to say it again, that's not in touch with how we feel. So even sometimes if I just got to lay there, I, I truly feel like I, I'm such a woman of faith. I feel like even with my eyes closed and I'm just laying there sometimes, I feel like the presence of God is just refueling me for what I need because I dare to get in his presence. And sometimes we have to make a conscious decision just to cease from movement. The next thing is to, um, it means to refresh oneself. You have to get in a place. Imagine, this is, imagine if we never refreshed, if we never took a shower. We would reek. We was, listen, how many times have you encountered, and this is not me being mean, but have you encountered people that don't take baths and stuff from other countries because of religion purposes? And they reek of an odor that is undescribable and to the point where you don't even want to be in the same room with people. Imagine how that is in the spiritual sense that you so out of sync with God and you so filthy of the things of this world or you so beat up by things in this world that cause you to have a bad attitude or people don't want to be around you. You have to take time to refresh yourself in the presence of God because when you do that, you smell different. Your fragrance is different. I just said something on, thank you God. I just said something on um, Facebook the other day about how sometimes a person's soul can have a foul smell. Yes. You, you smelling good on the outside. You got perfume on. You got your earrings on. You, you on fleek makeup wise. You got your tuxedo on. You got your drip on. But you, your soul got an a, a odor that is displeasing to the Lord. Your very fragrance of who you are make people want to run from you. Who want to live like that? And so when we enter into the rest of God, we got to refresh ourselves. And I know we talked about the physical sense, but when I smell good, I feel better. Amen. I make better decisions. When I smell good, can't nobody tell me nothing. I be walking around, don't even know it, that I'm, I'm flicking my hair and everything because I think I'm cute. But when I smell good, when I'm refreshed before God, I treat people better. When I'm fresh, refreshed before God, I can hear the Lord say, text Lily. She need an encouraging word. Or check him, Sister Londa. Or take them some lunch. Remember we talked about this last week. The fruit of the spirit. Just being self aware of who, what God wants us to do. And when we're refreshed we become better people. We become pleasing to God. The things that I say and do don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Or tie the hand of God in my life. Because I ain't hearing him. Or because my soul, my mind, my will and emotions stink so bad. That God can't use me. Who want to be in that situation? And who want to deal with somebody that got a foul soul? 
You don't never want to be around people that constantly bring you down. You don't never want to be around people that every time you turn around, they being negative. I just cut somebody off for that. And it's because we deserve God's best, but we even have to control how we refresh ourselves or not. The next thing is to recover strength. I can talk about this one all day too because a lot of y'all know I'm in health and wellness and this is all stuff that the Lord is literally downloading to me as I'm teaching right now. A lot of us work out or we want to work out <laughs> and um, in order for us to in the ex when we're exercising in order for us to be consistent we tear muscles first of all when we exercise and if we go, if the first thing that we do when we try to get back in that gym if we too saw what we do we become inconsistent again. We don't want to go, man. I'm hurt too bad today. I ain't finna go. And so even the supplements and stuff that I take, in the natural sense, you know, when I'm trying to recover strength, I take these tablets that help me sleep better. I take these tablets that make me be less sore. I actually do that because it helps me to recover my strength so that I can, I can be consistent in life. And I want to talk about this too, but, and, I, and I think it's so hand in hand of talking about how to recover our strength because I'm going I'm going to come back to the rest of them but I'm just feeling led to go into this point where I, I work at let's talk about our sleep and our mattresses how we recover strength I deal with that every day and sometimes how many times do I have people that come in my store and talk about now they 200 pound grown grown people and talk about they budget for a king size mattress is three hundred dollars and I'll be looking at them like they crazy because do we have those mattresses yes but you telling me you got cancer you telling me your bones hurt you telling me your back hurt and then the cost of what you're trying to give to me is never gonna suffice the solution that you need the quality of what you buy ain't really what you need. And so when I'm talking about really rest and recovery, sometimes it costs a little bit more. Hey, it costs a little bit more to be able to recover and strength. And what I mean by that is sometimes it, it costs you to cut people off. That ain't conducive to your spiritual life. If you want more from God, sometimes you have to change your environment. I don't know why I'm going here. Sometimes if you want more, if you want more solutions, you got to pay a thousand dollars instead of three hundred for a king size bed so that you can actually rest and recover. All right. And so I just wanted to break that down a little bit because it is true. Sometimes people are not willing to pay the cost of what they really need from the Lord. In order for you to get what you asking God for that rest, you don't want to be depressed. You don't want to be stressed out. Why you ain't doing nothing? God is waiting on you. Cut them friends out. Stop messing with that joker you know ain't conducive to your spiritual life. Stop stop settling and go out and look for a better job. Yes, you, you, you do what you're supposed to do where you at, but ain't no need to complain about not recovering if you ain't going to do what it takes. And sometimes the cost of what we're really needing from God, it costs us to crucify, number one, who we are too. It ain't your will over God's will. If you want to really re recover, from where you used to be and so I just I just felt led to go into that so what are you willing to what are you willing to put on the line to get the healing that you need from God to recover say like pause and think about that okay and so uh, the next one was to be placed or supported um, breaking down the, the, the word rest to be to, to rest or to be supported as to stay in a specific position so let's talk about that specific position part in order for us to rest we can't be in the wrong place in order for us to rest we can't be living in the old man we have to change and the scripture says be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that scripture is i just wrote that down nothing to tell y'all where it said Rest in the spirit of your mind. I'm going to find it here in a minute. Matter of fact, 
Hebrews 4 and 11 because I know we're talking about a lot of practicals and stuff. Let me give y'all some Bible. Y'all know I'm a, I'm a student of the word. So I want to give y'all some Bible and we won't dissect all of this stuff. But I think that this is so cool. Even if you got to gotta do a scripture a day or a chapter a day whenever uh, uh, and you always just for teaching purposes. Even if I give you, like I'm getting, getting ready to give to you now, I'm giving their great to give Hebrews 4 and 11. And that talks about us, let us to be eager to rest. To know, let us be eager to know this rest, the rest of God. And so anytime you're reading scripture for teaching purposes, you always want to read the scriptures around you. So even though I gave you Hebrews 4 and 11, you may want to read two scriptures before. You want, may want to go to uh, verse 9 and 10 and, or, and then also like uh, the verses after uh, verse 12 and 13 or whatever the case is. Because you don't ever want to just use one scripture. You want to understand the full context of what the scripture is talking about. And so this scripture talks about let us be eager to know this rest. What rest? The rest of God. How to, to um, rest in the middle of chaotic stuff. Matthews 11, 28 is the next scripture. Matthew 11 and 28. And it talks about and I will give you rest for your soul. You got it, Sister Londa? No, one more time. Matthews. It is uh, Matthews 11 and 28. Thank you. No problem. Matthew 11 and 28 talks about and that God will give us rest for our soul. He will give us. Give me. It's a gift. But we also, there's a prerequisite to that. We got to seek him for it too. And if we, we feel like everything is going crazy around us, we got to go to the source. He is the rest that we need. Hebrews 3 and 18. To whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest? So I know we talk about all of this good stuff, but when you're a disobedient, you can't enter into the rest of God. There are some people that won't enter into the rest of God because they don't make that, that conscious decision to do so. So sometimes when you feeling yourself always frustrated, always ready to cut somebody out, always got a bad attitude, always feeling overwhelmed, then this is the strip this is what the scripture talking to us about right here that we have to be willing to enter into the rest because if we don't then we'll stay exactly where we at and that's the, again that's in Hebrews 3 and 18 and I'm gonna give y'all the last scripture Psalms 4 and 8 in peace I will lay down I will make a conscious decision to lay down and sleep for for you Lord will give me safety uh, for you, Lord, will keep me safe. He's our refuge, y'all. He's our strength. He's all that we need. And this thing said, if I that in peace, I will lay down. Because when I get in peace, I, it's almost like you can imagine me getting in my bed when I choose peace. That and sleep. For the Lord will give us. Uh, uh, he will give us and keep us safe in in, in His rest. This one right here really, really slapped me in my face and made me go into worship this morning. It says that rest is a weapon. Listen, I think it's good to me. So, guess what? Rest is a weapon. Uh, rest is a weapon given to us by God. The enemy hates it because he wants you to, sh to be stressed and occupied. So when we find ourselves stressed out and occupied by everything else except for peace and joy and, and patience and love and kindness, we have to realize that we got to pull out our weapon, and that's rest. Rest means what? Not the absence of trouble, but trust in God. We got to enter into that peace place and, and start praying and asking God, Lord, you got to give me some rest in you because right now my mind is going crazy. And see, this is the thing about some saved people. I can't stand it. It drive me up the wall. They don't ever want to be honest with God. You ain't got to put no mask on when in the presence of God. You can tell the Lord how you feel. The other day I told the Lord, I said, honey, I said, Lord, you're going to have to help me before I go off on this joker. Because the words on the, the tip of my lips was not pleasing to the Lord. And so we have to be honest with God. We don't have to put on a mask. And if we don't serve a God that already don't know our heart anyway, he know how you feel it. But the scriptures say, Confession is made unto salvation, so it's always better 
to open up your mouth and tell God how you feel and be honest with him. Because he can't be honest with nobody that is in the state of mind where they, they acting like it ain't really real. But you have to be willing to go into the presence of God, man, and tell him how you feeling. Yeah. Be honest with God. If you got a problem in a, a problem with addiction, you need to be honest with God. Let me tell you one thing. I don't know why I'm going here either. But it's plenty of nights when I first moved back to Charlotte and I was in church all the time. And I truly love God, but I struggle with the spirit of addiction. I struggle with drinking. I would get over there in that corner. After I leave church and I was on my face before the Lord and I would drink so heavily. Because I just, I'm telling you, yes, Sister London, we can be real just because we got stuff that God need to deliver us from. Don't mean we ain't saved. I needed a savior. That's the whole point. If I'm all together before I come to the Lord, then why I need him? He, it's his responsibility to clean us up. And I'm telling you, I literally went in that corner because I was depressed. I was going through a, a, a breakup of eight years. I was going through life changes. I had just had to give up ten, tens of thousands of dollars for something I didn't do because I just, I got all this favor for somebody and they didn't pay it back. And I went through all of that stuff seeking God and I was still trying to handle it on my own. That's why I wanted to drink and stuff. But we need a savior. And if you got to be honest with God about what you going through. And I told the Lord and I was drunk. It was the last time I put a, 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 a piece of liquor to my lips. And I told the Lord right there on that floor. I just laid on the floor and I said, Lord, I don't want to live like this. How do I say I love you and I'm struggling with drinking? And if you be the God I serve, you're going to have to heal me. Because I can't do this on my own. I told God that. And I'm not lying to y'all. It sometimes it takes more than one cry out, though. You can't because you still struggle. You can't stop coming to God. Somebody asked the question last week on this thread and they said, do, is it a sin to keep praying about the same thing? No, it ain't. Sometimes you got to be persistent to, with God. And tell Lord, I won't go let go till you bless me. I won't let go till you heal me. I got a problem with sex outside of marriage. I got a problem with addiction. I got a problem with pride and lying and stealing. You can't get no healing from God if you ain't honest with him. And I'm encouraging somebody today, and I don't know why the Lord is letting me go here. But just because you addicted don't mean you ain't saved. Amen. But the only way you cannot be healed is if you don't confess. You be honest with God and you don't stop coming to church. Don't let no devil in hell tell you you a hypocrite because you got a problem. But let me tell you one thing I know to be true. You Messiah. Is that when you keep coming to God and you sincere, you going to get a miracle. He going to heal you because it's impossible to stay the same when you in the presence of God all the time. You gonna, Some things going to shift off of you. Your attitude going to change. Your money going to change the way your appearance is on the outside. Because see what sin do and make you look raggedy too. Don't think people don't know something going on. Because they do. Your whole, the enemy, his job is to sip us like wheat. He even, when we start drinking and addiction and stuff, it even messes with our physical health. And the way we make decisions, chemical imbalances and all that kind of stuff. And that's the enemy's job and he on his job. But you don't stop fighting for your life. You don't do that. And the way that you, you gain healing is that you confess these things in front of God. You got to take off the mask in his presence so that he can allow you to rest. Because let me tell you something. After I stopped, got off that flow that night, I fell asleep there too. Because I believe the sincerity of the cry out of my heart. The Lord performed a miracle in my life. I never drank a smoke again. And I struggled with that thing for a few years in secret. But that night, I believe the Lord heard my cry. I know he did. And that's why I can get on here and say sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost as, as strong as y'all think Felicia is. I had to go through some places of uncertainty. I had to go through some pain. And a lot of it, I was self-inflicted. But I had to go through those things to get me to this place spiritually. And the only reason I'm here, and I'm free of addiction. I'm free of all that stuff is because I kept coming to God and I and I kept entering into the rest of God because you cannot stay the same and you cannot remain in that place 
of pain and frustration and depression and lack and all of those things when you keep entering to God's presence. So you got to keep going after him. You got to keep getting on here when you don't feel like it. I don't care if you went out the night before. You get your behind up and come to church the next day. Because we don't serve a God that ain't already died for them sins anyway. He knew you were going to do it before you did it. And it's not a, a, a license to keep sinning, of course. Because the Holy Spirit convicts too. And I remember times where I would drink and then feel convicted and I came to church, but I still came anyway. Because me and the, and the devil was mad at that. And I don't care. You hear me? And that's why he's mad at me now today. Because I kept coming to God. And now look where God got me in. He's using me in every facet. From social media to my place of work. From the time to from the people that I, I actually interacted with eight years ago, ten years ago, that I have to still minister to today. Sowing seeds. Because all of those things was even divine. Because back then, even when I wasn't saved and cussing folk out and doing crazy stuff, I still acknowledge who God was. And they don't forget that either. So God still allowed me to plant seeds. And so I just wanted to encourage y'all today. You cannot, you cannot be healed by putting a mask on in the presence of God. You cannot enter into God's rest if you're not honest and open with a God that I already know anyway. Okay? And so I know that we have been on here for about an hour now, but I got a few more minutes and I'm going to let y'all go. And I hope I'm encouraging somebody today. I hope that I am because this is word that I ate first and I'm still eating. Because the word is right to me first before I give it. And I got to live it too. And so, the last thing is um, an in the, the, the breakdown of rest is an instance or a period of relaxing or ceasing to engage in um, less stressful activity or things that bog you down. We have to make a conscious decision that when we feel ourselves like that, y'all, we have to take a step back and we have to allow God to to refresh us. But the way, let me give y'all some practical ways because we talked about a few of these things. Because so how are people telling you to enter into the rest of God? How do you do that other than faith? Because I hear what you're saying, Fee, but you got to help us with that. Okay, so I got you. Okay, so I want y'all to write these things down. And I'm going to send all of y'all a link. One of my coworkers sent me a link because I'm, in, I'm seeing a Christian therapist right now for the first time in my life. And I cannot even imagine where I would be had I not said yes to wise counsel. And this season of my life is almost like, I, it ain't almost like God knew that I would need this resource. And because he's giving it to me, I'm going to give it to y'all. I'm going to send y'all a link. The first thing that I want y'all to do is to understand that you have to have a prayer life. I don't care if you got to start five minutes in the shower or put a, note, a sticky note up to remind yourself to pray every day. You, you got to do that. 